Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs. This is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Monday, August 5th, 2024. And if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my daily rundown best bet in the MLB, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Monday, Major League Baseball. First up, we see the New York Mets taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. We're going to see Andre Palante and Sean Manaya as your starters. And this is a really tough spot here for the Mets. You know, this is a makeup game from the May 8th weather postponement uh, between these two teams. And you know, the Mets, they finished up that homestand this week against the Twins, then, or last week against the Twins. Then they went to Los Angeles for the weekend series against the Angels. They play this one-off game in St. Louis, and then after this, go right back towards the west side of the country You know, against the Rockies at Coors Field. So... This is not going to be an easy week for a team that's, you know, needing these wins to try to get, you know, hold their ground in the National League playoff race. But in this matchup, I'm going to give the advantage to St. Louis. You know, Andre Palante's pitched well, and he's got even better expected numbers when you look at the expected ERA. Sean Nye is coming off one of his best starts of the season, but St. Louis has slowly improved a bit against left-handed pitching, and his expected numbers aren't the best. His expected ERA in the fours. I think St. Louis gets a few runs off Manaya early. And while the Mets, I do think, have the better bullpen when you look at the expected numbers, we saw them blow you know, a lead in that Angels series. And it's been an inconsistent bullpen this year. I mean, in the last month, got an ERA at 4.89 compared to the St. Louis Cardinals bullpen at 3.87. So run better. I'm going to go with the Cardinals in this game on the money line at home. Next up, the Arizona Diamondbacks taking on the Cleveland Guardians. Zach Allen and Logan Allen are the projected starters I honestly lean towards the over in this game because while Zach Allen's definitely in better form and the last game was excellent, six innings, one run, six strikeouts, any starting pitcher, this is a tough matchup for him against this Guardians lineup because they do, they do such a good job at limiting strikeouts. They get on base, they steal bases like we saw on Sunday against Corbin Burns, who's been one of the more consistent starting pitchers in baseball, yet he struggled in that game on Sunday at Progressive Field. The Guardians got to him. So I think Gallon pitches well. I think he'll be the better starting pitcher by the end of this game because I do think Arizona's going to back him up. Get to Allen. They've been strong against lefties this year. So I like the Diamondbacks to find the win in the end, but I also like the over in D-backs Guardians. Next up, we see the Cincinnati Reds taking on the Miami Marlins. No official starter for Cincinnati. Rodery Munoz for Miami. And the Marlins are still you know, playing pretty competitive baseball, even after the tra trade deadline where they were big-time sellers. But this is just not a great matchup, in my opinion, for Miami with Munoz on the mound. We know the big problem in Munoz's game this season has been the home run ball. He's given up 19 home runs in 66 innings. He had a stretch where he wasn't giving up as much sharp contact against the White Sox, Astros, and Mets. But now, his last two starts, four more home runs combined against the Orioles and the Rays. And when you look at the Cincinnati Reds, while this game's not a great American ballpark, and it is a, a very pitcher-friendly ballpark like Lone Depot, the Reds are still number one in baseball in the last 30 days in isolated power against right-handed pitching. So I do think this is a pretty good matchup for them. We'll have to see who the official starter is on the other side for, you know, for the Reds, but I'm going to go with the Reds right now on the money line. Next up, the San Francisco Giants taking on the Washington Nationals. No official starter for San Francisco, but Patrick Corbin should be going for the Nationals. Now, Patrick Corbin faced these Giants at the beginning of the season back on April 10th. It was a while ago, but it was at Oracle Park, which is one of the more pitcher-friendly parks in baseball. But despite that, Corbin still struggled in five and two-thirds, giving up 11 base hits and seven earned runs in a 7-1 Giants win. Now, fast forward to now, we saw Corbin in his last game give up the triple-double, as I saw on social media. 13 base hits, 11 total runs, and 10 earned runs in a 17 to nothing Diamondbacks win and when you're facing a team like San Francisco that's been so strong against lefties, they've already gotten, you know, we've already had proof that they can get to Corbin earlier in the year, and their bullpen's improved, they're just playing good baseball in general. I got to roll with the Giants in this game on the run line and probably extend the run line out to two and a half runs and uh, potentially take the team total over as well. Next up, the Houston Astros taking on the Texas Rangers. Looks like Hunter Brown should be going for the Astros. No official starter for the Rangers. The Rangers have not been great against right-handed pitching in the last month, or really overall this season. 
And Hunter Brown's pitching well for the Astros after a nightmare start to the season. He's been a completely different pitcher. He's been one of the more competitive pitchers, really, in the last couple of months. And while his last game wasn't his best against the Pirates, five and two-thirds, four earned runs, he still had eight strikeouts. You know, I've mentioned he hasn't looked as strong in his last three, I would say, starts. That first game at Seattle on the road is still was a good line, six innings, a shutout ball, but it did look like his control was off a little bit. The game against Oakland, he gave up eight base hits. Most of those were singles, but still a lot of base runners. And then against the Pirates, the four earned runs like we just talked about, nine base hits to go with it. That is a little bit concerning, but I still think Brown will be the better option by the end of this game. I like the Astros' bullpen, so give me the Astros in the money line. Next up, we see the Chicago Cubs host of the Minnesota Twins. David Festa and Kyle Hendricks are your starters. You know, the Twins took advantage of that weekend series with the White Sox, and now they have another series here against a team with a losing record. And while David Festa and Hendricks both have you know similar ERAs, I think Festa, when you look at you know, his ERA is at 6.98, but it's really because of those first two starts of the year. Since then, he has been you know excellent. His, his last two games, nine and a third innings, only three runs, so an ERA less than three, 13 strikeouts to go with it. I think he's a much better option in this game. Hendricks, I'd like him more as a reliever, not as a starting pitcher this year. The Twins are hitting righties very well in the last month. I'm going to go with the Minnesota Twins in this game on the money line and potentially the run line as well. Next up, the Boston Red Sox taking on the Kansas City Royals. James Paxton and Brady Singer are your starters. I think Singer's the much better option in this game, even though the Red Sox are hitting righties very well in the last month. I could see them getting to Singer for a few runs, but I also think the Royals can get to Paxton and the Red Sox bullpen quite a bit early on, you know, early and often. I think when you look at the Red Sox bullpen in the last month, been one of the worst bullpens in baseball. Paxton, we've talked about it a lot this season. The numbers on paper aren't too bad, but still an ERA of 4.52. A lot steeper than where it was at the beginning of the year. That's because we've seen him regress quite a bit. His expected numbers are still not great. The, the case per nine, walks per nine, some of the worst in baseball. I got to go with the Royals in this game on the money line and run line. Next up, we see the Chicago White Sox taking on the Oakland Athletics. We're going to see Jonathan Cannon and J.P. Sears as the starters. Got to continue to fade the White Sox until we see them snap that losing streak. Not a lot of value in a game like this because of that losing streak, but I think the A's are the way to go here on the run line. You know, J.P. Sears coming off one of his best starts of the season. Cannon's also coming off one of his best starts of the year, and that, that could be an issue. But I still think Oakland has enough offensively and against this White Sox bullpen to find the win and run line cover in the end. Give me the A's on the run line at home. Next up, we see the Philadelphia Phillies taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers. We're going to see Aaron Nola and Tyler Glass now as the projected starters. Now, these are two teams that had great starts to the season and are still in good shape in terms of the standings in the National League, but they're both not playing great baseball right now. And, uh, you know, injuries have played a role in that, especially for the Dodgers. But when you look at this game, I do trust L.A. a little bit more. I think Glass now is the better starting pitcher. The expected numbers will, you know, will show that 2.6 expected ERA. The Dodgers bullpen had a pretty rough month of July, but towards the end of the month, into the beginning of August so far, that bullpen's made some improvements, much better expected numbers. I trust it a little bit more right now. And then you look at the, the numbers offensively. The Phillies have really struggled against right handed pitching in the last month. The Dodgers have not been great either, but they're a little bit more towards league average than Philadelphia. So I'm going to give the advantage to the Dodgers in this game, especially Dodgers Stadium on the money line. And that's it. Those are the games for Monday in baseball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Put those baseball picks in the comments section below. And again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ryan Manelli. Good luck.